So we have quite a bit of news here today in regards to the Tate brothers. Just more security cam footage of these same two broads. What's that? Emma and Aliona coming to and from the Tate compound. This one right here, and we'll enlarge it for everybody here in a second, ladies. Uh, it was filmed four days before the raid when they were supposedly being, oh, held against their will, going out for an entire day, an entire day of shopping, and then coming back later in the evening as well. It's more evidence that is patent that makes us so patently obvious that at least for these people now of course those two girls that we apparently are the two victims that we don't know anything about their stories could be horrific but if they're all being lumped together the two girls who don't want to be called victims that the court just brandish or is just brands as being brainwashed and then you have these two lion broads then how can you take any of this stuff seriously but yes as the tate brothers are being cooped up and the girls as well one of which I think that's Luana that's uh, hopping in the front of the BMW to take those girls shopping. I think so. I think, perhaps. Oh, I'm sorry, taking them to be trafficked. Whatever. All of this exculpatory evidence, which would be used to prove the innocent to the accused. That's the technical jargon for it. But as of right now, everybody's being cooped up. The girls, the brothers, because the prosecution is trying to come up with any evidence. All they have are these spurious claims. The ones, oh, hey, the two girls that you see right there, those are Eliza Blue's girls, right? Mm-hmm, good upstanding individuals, birds of a feather, right? We'll be saving my fire and fury for the later half of this video because, yeah, man, I've been here before, but it's, it's uh, <laughs> I'm beyond disgusted with so many people here today, especially these two line broads in this video. So, Without further ado, let's get this all set up. So hi, yeah, I'm over here. They're just playing some stock music over top of this. And I just want to make sure because you guys can now see the door. It's obviously, it's uh, if I can do this one rightly. Yeah, so the door for the Tate compound is going to be right there. You know, neon lights and all that stuff. If you've seen as much of the compound as I have, that's the front gate. And then you just go right through that as well, which is opposite from the way that my camera... All this shit is so fucked up. But yeah, you go that way and then you'd be right towards the house. So yeah, this is right out towards the street. And like I said before, this is April 7th, 2002. I do... The raid was either on April 9th or April 11th. So this is just a couple days before... Interpol was contacted and then they came in for the first raid, not for the televised ones with all the media being there, but these were the conditions to which the girls were being held captive and as you can see, okay, yep, they're both look, yep, they're just being uh, ushered into that SUV at gunpoint, right? with girls as well like i don't know if that's anybody's kid or anything like that but oh and then they come back later that night in the same vehicle uh what, what was the time differential on that one that's what okay so yeah uh nine f or 1947 and then okay we'll just let it run again and then we got thursday okay that's the seventh oh no that's the same day so half an hour later half an hour later just about so yeah 8 17 okay and then everybody comes out. Obviously, now it's black and white, but they look like they're wearing about the exact same stuff. So, I don't know. Did they just go to perform for a half an hour? And here you have, oh, the next day, of the girls going to the club. Oh, yeah, um, that's our girl, uh, Emma, you know, the, the runaway. Was her name Emma or Emily? I don't remember. Fucking trifling whore. How about that one? Does that one work for everybody? Because I'm... I don't know, man, because all of this stuff is just, it's, it's distressing to say the least. So don't see anybody come to get them. But what was the time differential on that one? Because right now it's 930. So it's a little bit later than what we're used to seeing beforehand. So yeah, God damn it. I'm just too good at picking my time. So they're waiting outside. That looks to be, it's a little sketchy. Uh, 18. Oh, okay. So that would be 630. Yeah, six, uh, tw about a 20 to 7, 20 to 7 at that point when I just pressed uh, resume on that. They're waiting outside, just looking for an escape. Oh, and then da Dag Nabbit, they come back at 9.30 at night with, I don't know, whips and chains, new harnesses, so those ones don't chafe. Like, uh, what, what, what are we looking at here? Okay, so girls going back behind the hatchback and... 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just any anybody that they could pull over and ask for help, but obviously all three of the girls that must have been the night where they filmed those the more infamous tiktoks the ones where they're just i don't know barely dancing it kind of just looked like they're flopping around but no they're just shopping spent hours shop a couple hours shopping getting a whole bunch of stuff and then hey now we got um all three of the girls, uh, three girls at least, uh, maybe that was Georgiana, maybe that was Luana, but yeah, no, nope, they all went out and a whole bunch of luggage and never to be seen again, right? Unfucking believable Unfucking believable So yeah, that's the quality of the two most high-profile accusers. The girl, uh, the girl in the pink skirt. Can we find a still shot in that one? Yeah, wow, that was perfect, okay. The girl in the skirt right there. The more brazen of the two. That's the one that is accusing Andrew of the most horrific crimes associated with this fishing expedition. Does she look like she's being held captive? I'm just wondering. Can anybody can anybody connect the dots on this one? And yeah, like it's being captioned here. I don't know who top top girl Kiko is, but shout out to her. The Andrew Tate case it should be a matter of concern to every man. Yep, but then you take a look at the responses and the replies, and especially for the next vi next half of this. Let's just say if we were living in, med in medieval times and uh, the strongest, tallest, smartest men would be on the largest horses wielding the j biggest sword, conquering through different towns, I'm just telling you, I'd be exacting some revenge on some people that I'm seeing replying and running off at the mouth right now. I'm bubbling with rage. I'll just say that but yes as she's as she's captioning this or whoever this is as it stands any man who's ever flown a girl out to see him and it didn't work out how she anticipated for months for months they were there has engaged in human trafficking that idea should scare you or hell even if somebody calls you out online for your bullshit we're all right now by eliza blue standards we're making them victims once again by calling out their fucking bullshit this is a dangerous precedent we are setting. Yup, and nobody outside of a very small group of people. And that's why, that's why when everybody was opining when Andrew was really popping off back during the summer. Oh, the red pill's going mainstream. There's going to be so many more people hopping on. And this is going to be a good thing because the world needs it right now. As somebody who's been around and has thought like this since, well, the first person that I remember seeing popping off was the late great Patrice O'Neill. I've been immersed in this stuff since 2014. I've probably really refined my game in the past year or so, but everything that Tate says, everything that Myron from Fresh and Fit, Rolo Tomasi, John, Modern Life Dating, like those are the guys that I go to. Those are my go-to curated sources. And I would encourage everybody else, if you're liking what I'm talking about and you want to do something more laser focused on specific topics, you know, feel free to go over there, especially in the light of silence from so many other creators that I'm seeing out there. I think Tim Pool's probably put out and again, I don't follow him or anything. It's just in your, you know, like your regular feed. You see some res uh, related tweets from different people. So yeah, I see Tim comment on it once. I don't even know if he's done any videos on Andrew Tate or his false imprisonment or everybody else that's in there. I bet she probably only thinks that it's Andrew being held up mostly because he's uh, he's down bad because he couldn't get that interview like he was just wishing for by putting Eliza on blast. This situation, and I called it back in the cut if nobody wants to address this with an uncritical eye all of those same people who are saying oh my god oh you need to stand up for free speech oh free speech is only viable if you stand up for speech that you don't like you can see something happening across the world yeah the laws are different but your principles your principles should remain the same you see evidence evidence like this that just proves beyond a shadow of a doubt on top of the pile that we've already seen that ex that exonerates the Tates and it casts significant doubt on these lion broads. Just the two of them. The two of the other ones that we know are totally cool. But they're all being lumped into this corrupt organization that refers to itself as Dicot in Romania, trying to make their name off of something because somebody's looking for a promotion within the Romanian government. And all of these fly by night free speech warriors. All of these people, oh, we're pushing against the grain, are either fucking silent or they're too busy being some of the most disgusting fucks I've ever seen in my entire life because I seen this today and like my heart sank absolutely 100%. Like for fuck's sakes, I've, I've never met the guy before. I know him just as well as you do and 
All I hear is the accounts from people that are close to him who have spent time with him. And it, realistically, if you listen to his long form content, you get a totally different picture than everybody else who's just tastelessly dunking on him for having lung cancer. That's the thing. I'm not going to give anybody air because I've read through all of the replies and quote tweets and everybody saying just some of the most horrific shit on earth. I just... I'm constantly, it's not like I hold much hope for just your regular run-of-the-mill, blue-pilled, plugged-in individual, but you would think that, okay, even if you didn't like him, like, there's, uh, there was a report, a medical report that, um, Joe Biden had a cancerous lesion or something that could be potentially cancerous, you know, removed and all of the cancerous cells were uh, shown to be removed from his body. It's like, I don't like Biden like that. You watch my political coverage when it comes to this stuff, you know, I am vehemently against all of his policies, but I always state every single time I talk about Biden, hopefully he lives a long and wonderful life. I just think that you're the worst president in modern history. I just, hey man, I don't wish death on anybody, but to see that in droves once again, it just harkens back to about this time last year when Kevin Samuels passed away from his heart attack. There's people coming out of the woodworks to say some of the most despicable, heinous shit that I've ever seen in my life. The red pill, yeah, it's gone mainstream. Intersexual dynamics, people understand it now more than ever. But those people who are going to take the message, it's the same percentage of people. It's never going to be any more than... 10, may, maybe 10, 10 might be generous percent of the population, 10% of the male population that are really going to take that message, are really going to curate it, and they're going to improve their life off the back of it. The rest of them, they're just going to be surface level idiots that are just going to glom onto whatever the popular talking point is. Ooh, wherever I can get attention. Like I'm thinking of one fat fuck whose only defining characteristic is the character his former boss gave him he's not even good at his current fucking job oh he just continued to talk stupidly about mass media you dumb fuck oh his pr agency referred to him as mlk har 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 did you read the fucking thread no of course not go on and tell me how woke disney is at the center of all of the controversy and how har 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 oh ant-man 3 bombed fucking loosen that man bun you fat cunt it's not like this video is gonna get monetized anyways now i'm just so sick of all of these people People that claim to have so much decency these are all these former these whatever you know conservatives trad cons whatever the fuck you want to call them all of these people that preach or preach freedom liberty oh we hate censorship unless it's somebody that we don't like who says some things that are just a little bit too uncomfortable to reconcile with then you're totally fine with him potentially rotting and dying in a fucking cell i hate the thought of this because like i said man um and i even shouted him out beforehand like we see guys in this space to just punch out at inopportune times like patrice o'neill in november of 2021 or 2011 sorry holy fuck it's been that long right well before his time evan samuels like i know i wasn't his target demographic you know wrong shade but you know he was out there still doing incredibly good and important work and that's about the closest corollary we can draw on this one because yeah he just passed away of a random heart attack and then everybody wants to oh, let's see he's one of those red pill losers who just died alone and because it was i think a couple days before mother's day they were also saying it's an early mother's day gift and now you just have people just openly saying without any sort of illusions that yeah we're glad he's going to be dead soon but yeah we we've got some medical records it's like oh man like this is Somebody who has seen a loved one go from being diagnosed with cancer to just wasting away and being dead within a month. It's, man, it's, um, it's something you'll never forget. And then just to see the hatred and vitriol for somebody who's just so incredibly innocent and then to just, just disheartening. Anyways. The CT report is extremely alarming. Uh, this comes from, once again, Suleiman Ahmed, once again, doing great job with the official source documents running through this stuff. Oh yeah, and I didn't really, you know, mention this. It was uh, like, maybe just a little bit up in my emotions. My apologies, but uh, the official statement comes from, yeah, good, that's all in frame. Good, great, wonderful, fantastic. I haven't done my big graphical overhaul yet, so I don't quite know if everything's going to be framed appropriately, but that comes as a statement from Sartorial Shooter, Jules, he's 
his manager. That's what he claims. But yeah, the the story had been making the rounds for a minute. And uh, regardless of his official position, he knows Tate. He's been around Tate. He's a high-ranking member of the War Room, all that stuff. So he's inexorably linked with the Tate brothers. So he's legit in this statement. He wouldn't be making it if he didn't run it past all of the Tate guys. And as you're going to see in some of these documents and some of the newer documents as well, uh, this is all, it's all legit and the time frame works out. So, okay, uh, a lot of people are asking me if Tate, uh, Tate lung cancer story is true. Yes, it's true. I was the one with him uh, to and from the hospitals in Dubai. I don't have any more specifics to share. Yeah, but it really does start to connect a bunch of dots because, okay, like Dubai is one of those cities in the world where it's kind of catering to businessmen, billionaires, millionaires, all of the successful people. So it wasn't completely absurd that Tate and his brother would be setting up a residence in Dubai. All makes sense. The very high-powered, well-connected individuals go down there to expand their networks, make money together. It all makes sense, right? But then for him to publicly convert to Islam and get closer to God, uh, yeah. And then to have this medical revelation come forward as well, it all makes sense. It all makes a lot of sense. Anyways, uh, the CT report is extremely alarming. Andrew Tate may have lung cancer. Urgent biopsy needed and a six-month delay could be fatal. And we've actually got the results of, and I think that's probably a good time to bring this up, and this comes from Censored Men. Shout out to him once again. Suleiman and Censored Men just publishing and putting out all of the most relevant information. So if I'm missing something on a day and you, or if you guys just want to go search for information for yourself, I would recommend both. Both of those guys, incredible work that they do, 1000%. But this is an, an analysis that just came out, ooh, depends on what the time frame is. Uh, I guess maybe yesterday, it would have been yesterday, I think, by the way, that time zones work out. But there was a biopsy done and it looks like right now, well, right now, but the smears uh, show that the cytological uh, appearance of the cells that were analyzed were benign which is very good, but that comes with a big caveat, okay? Because yeah, you got the histopathol or yeah, the histopathological diagnosis, smears composed of frequent avular mi or macrophages, rare lymphocytes and uh, neutrophils, rare superficial squamish, uh, squamish cells, uh, no A types and recovent uh, desquamated bronchial cells, no, am no A types, okay, uh, some with slight uh, relative challenges absent of malignancy cells in a smear examined so the absent of malignant cells had also been analyzed but yeah this this report is fairly heavily redacted but it's benign right now but if it's not properly treated it's it's a death sentence like there's no two ways about it. And fuck, man. Okay. There are no. Uh, there are reports he lost 10 kilograms of weight, so 20, 25 pounds, uh, which is also a sign of cancer. Cancer could be incurable now. Yeah, without proper treatment. So yeah, we'll read through this. This one was on January 2nd, 2023. Okay. Yeah, because there was also a report, and I was going to make note of this as well. And we talked about it uh, back in the day when they were being detained. I think after their appeal got rejected in the new year, I think that's when it was, but there was also a report that one of the Tate brothers and then later one of the girls was hospitalized, but one of the brothers, and nobody was being terribly specific about this stuff, was taken to hospital, and that would line up with this time frame right here. I'm writing in this letter, okay, this is uh, from... King's College uh, Hospital in London, okay. Uh, oh, Care of Dubai, okay. You can also tell from the address box in there as well, so. All right, I'm writing this letter in the capacity as Mr. Tate's primary care physician. I'm a consultant with family medicine and medical doctor at King's College Hospital London in Dubai. Andrew is currently being investigated for a lesion on his upper right lung at King's College Hospital London in Dubai. He recently undergone a contrast-enhanced CT scan, the report of which I attached in or on the 12th of December 2022 uh, where there were some concerning features of the lesion that require urgent investigation and tissue diagnosis so that was ooh, yeah a couple weeks before they got snatched up okay case was uh, discussed at our multidisciplinary team meeting MDT meeting and he has been scheduled to have a number of further urgent investigations and procedures including a PET CET uh, positron emissions to uh, so a CT scan okay bronchoscopy so having your lungs taken a look at because your bronchioles yeah, yeah all that stuff you know 
and tissue sampling. Okay. Uh, is my professional medical recommendation that Andrew is urgently repatriated to the United Arab Emirates to undergo these medical investigations without delay. And because this was written in early January, you know how well this letter was received. Uh, time is of the essence, and any further delay in the investigation may have serious negative implications for Andrew's physical health. And they're like, nah, he's he flew some girls out. So, uh, CT scan of the chest with contrast. So, the findings. Okay, yeah, so axial slices. So, yeah, they did a biopsy on that. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, no, no, this is the CT scan. My mistake. Axial slices obtained level of the chest contrast administration. Yeah, okay, you don't need to know all of that stuff. Uh, the findings, posterior segment, uh, right upper lobe. So on the back side of the uh, right, I guess that would be right there on me on the back side of it. Okay. A sizable space occupying lesion is identified with uh, multi or obulated contour. Very, very tiny. It uh, measures a 4.4 centimeters anteroposteriorly and uh, 2.9 centimeters craniologically and uh, 3.7 centimeters transversely. So it's a, it's a pretty big lesion. I don't know if we can call it a tumor yet. Demonstrates popcorn-like center calcifications. After contrast administration, enhancing components identified m uh, multiple satellite lesions and probable nodule infra. Uh, infiltration of the interlobular septa are also oh. okay so there are additional lesions as well okay comprehensive phenomenon are uh, identified on the uh, bronchi for the uh, posterior and a typical or yeah apical uh, segments of the right upper lobe without complete occlusion Findings are nonspecific uh, differential diagnosis includes a uh, hematoma harmatoma Haramatoma. <laughs> Need to have some love of D in here. Uh, however, the size of the lesions in the satellite nodules and infiltration of the surrounding tissues are finding suspicious and more aggressive neoplastic lesion. Oh. Tissue biopsy is recommended. The rest of the pulmonary. Uh, okay, so the rest of the lung is unremarkable. Evidence of pleura and pericardial effusions. Oh, no evidence. Okay, so that's good. No pathologically enlarged uh, lymph nodes. Cool. Uh, triangular soft tissue density in the anterior septum mediastinum. Uh, the finding. Okay. Yeah. There are multiple uh, reactive ax uh, axillary node or lymph nodes bilaterally. Ooh. So in the impression, there's a posterior segment in the right upper lobe, sizable space occupying identified as detailed above. The findings are nonspecific. The differential diagnosis includes uh, a uh, haromatoma. <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, however, the size of the lesion, satellite nodules, and the infiltration of the surrounding tissue are finding uh, suspicious for a more aggressive neoplastic lesion. Tissue biopsy is recommended. Yeah, we already got to that. We took a look at the results. So yeah, and here are the receipts to just back up what Shooter was saying. I can confirm that Andrew Tate is a patient under the care of the doctor. Okay, so uh, 23rd of February. Okay, this is while they were in custody. Uh, hospital, okay. I was seen on the following occasions. Okay, so they were just looking for records that he was there. So December 5th, uh, December oh, twice on the 5th, uh, once on the 12th, once on the 14th. Yeah, okay, one for a consultation, one for an x-ray, one for a CT scan, and a meeting with a lung doctor. Great. The appointment on the 14th, uh, the following, a multidisciplinary team meeting uh, discussing the abnormality seen on the chest x-ray and CT scan of the thorax. Andrew was scheduled to have further investigations in uh, January 2023 when it was expected to return from his travels. Yeah, he was just going to be going up to Romania for a second and then punch back down to Dubai because cancer is pretty serious uh scheduled to have an urgent uh, pet ct scan uh bronchoscopy ct guided biopsy of the lung lesions in january of 2023 but obviously missed those dates he was a little tied up so yeah that looks like just zoomed in a little bit on top of that so and then yeah i'll link to the rest of this stuff if you want to take a look at the other documents as well and then a suleiman kind of summarizes here if it's lung cancer yeah it's uh, it's a death sentence uh, waiting additional six months on top of it uh, and it's over medical team have said urgent investigations needed to start uh, at the start of january it's now march that's catastrophic it's not even been charged but given a possible a death sentence yep and everybody's taking the opportunity legitimately 
I would show you them, but I really don't want to give them airtime, to be completely honest. All of the replies, everybody's just saying, Thought you were smoking cigars, you get what you deserve. Or see, karma. Michio, even after all of the stuff that's out there, he's known this stuff the entire time. And in the most recent tweet thread, which I don't know if it's this copywriter, it's obviously somebody else that's putting it up, or he's got a lot of time to think about a bunch of stuff, so maybe these are his writings in some form or fashions. Don't take mindset tips from the happy man. Take them from a depressed, miserable man who performs exceptionally. And you know what else all of these fucking brainlets that are out there doing? Duh, dude, I thought you said depression doesn't exist. Just goes to show you, it's like those same people that say, Duh, all these fake wannabe alpha men, they just call themselves alpha and yet they just bitch and complain. Never once called himself alpha. Never once said that depression doesn't exist. Says that feeling depressed exists. It's merely a motivator to get your ass out and do something. Your, it's your mind telling you that you need to accomplish something that you need to fill and pave over a deficiency in your life. But these are these fucking idiots that are out there that used to just purport themselves to be, oh, you know, we're fighting the good fight. We're all a part of the culture war, you useless fucks. I pray a situation like this does not befall you because you could not handle it as well as Tate is. Everybody can preach positivity in the sunshine. A child can be happy when things are going well. I learned mindset from my kickboxing coach as he cried, telling me a story of the genocide in Bosnia. As my father held his fractured face together, I paid attention to his words. These are lessons. This is mindset. Everyone can smile in the club. Smile when your nose is broken. That's a man. Most men are living life on easy mode. Talk about being a lifeguard in six inches of water. And in the stormy seas who have lessons to teach, not the forever smiling dork. Dork is such a great word because that's what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing people, yeah, you know what? I like Attack on Titan just as much as the next guy, but I'm not waiting and I'm not posting just so I can just sit back and watch something. You know what? I'm doing the work. I've got shit to do this evening, but you know what? I, it doesn't affect the fact that I'm making a video as long as it's going to take to the highest quality that I can go out there and put it throughout the rest of the week. I block off hours and hours and hours a day. You don't know it. You don't care. You don't have to care. That's my burden. That's what I do because I see a devoid space that I'm looking to occupy. I'll keep it a buck. I take a look at all of these pop or, or pop up fly by night content creators and none of them have anything between the ears. All they want to do is just go out there and they just want to push a little bit of information. Just get your clicks. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And then they'll just bitch, moan, and whine and complain. Help, my channel's under attack. I'm being shadow banned. Now you're just fucking terrible at your job. Just sh shut your goddamn mouth. Listen, I know some topics that don't hit. I don't do them anymore. I could do some policy shit when it comes to politics, but nobody wants to watch that fucking nonsense, and I'm totally fine with that. You guys want drama? Bet. I'll cover it, but I'm also going to cover it in a way that I can spin it so we can learn something off the back of that. When it comes to the current events, me or media, whatever the fuck I claim up there, news, politics, pop culture, relationships, intersexual dynamics, whatever the fuck else, sports as well, every once in a while there's something interesting that comes off of that. I don't see anybody providing value when it comes to reading and understanding content. They just want clicks. You know what I want? I want a group of people that are out there hearing my words, reading the content, maybe doing your own information. Maybe you think I missed something. That's totally fine too. I'll come back and try to fill in the gaps as much as possible. Giving you the tools necessary so that you in your individualized life, you can go out there and suss the nonsense away from the nuggets. Separate the wheat from the chaff. Andrew Tate was instrumental when it comes to connecting a bunch of dots for me, specifically at the beginning of last year, in on and around this time last year was when i found his message and fresh and fit and john mld and rollo tomasi before that it was just me listening to old episodes of black philip really just thinking and pondering on this stuff and those guys just really elevated everything that i was thinking and gave that much needed flair zest and quality of content that i was looking for and looking to share with the world so whenever i see idiots celebrate an unjustly imprisoned man being diagnosed with cancer if it's not taken care of that inspires me to work even harder press even stronger because if not me 
who else and if not you guys listening there's nobody else you can go back and you can watch now oh, fuck it mindless shit from guys who think that they want to push oh we're pushing against the culture war you got your quarterings you got your tim pools you got your yellow flashes you got all of these fucking idiots that just stop at level one there's a bunch of other people in there as well fuck it i'll say it it's just the friday night tights crew those guys also have brain dead takes on this stuff willingly and knowingly brain dead continue to push that though they're just fake alpha males that's why i know you're retarded and that's why i don't subscribe to any of them anymore because it's just it's, it's a fucking lost cause and that's why i think being honest being forthright having a red pill mindset being Ac this term makes me cringe but you know it being actually based and principled instead of just purporting it for clicks but yeah this is um depressing not gonna lie not gonna lie news like this really gets a guy down but you can use it as justification to just be a sad sack piece of shit and not do anything about it just wallow in your sadness or you can use it as inspiration to sharpen your own thoughts to cultivate your own voice to go to go forward and to be a better man than you were yesterday Man or woman, let's keep it a buck. So, with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.